Not everybody has the ability to focus on the game for 10 hours a day, but throwing it up on a second monitor and AFKing while you get some work done is a great way to make some passive GP or gain some XP. And with that in mind, welcome to AFKing 9 to 5. Fellas, welcome back to some more No Feather AFK content. Today I want to explore the beautiful continent of Karend and try out a workday while doing Zaya runecrafting. This video will cover both blood and soul runes, so I'm excited to see if this is as good as I remember. Runecraft as a skill has traditionally always been quite slow XP for the average player. There are faster methods to gain experience in activities like lava runes and running ZMI, but Zaya offers the player a much more AFK training method with a span of AFK time mixed in with a short active burst of clicking. Before we really start talking about this method though, there is a lot I need to talk about. I want to quickly mention how much better Runelight and specifically the GPU or 117 HD plugin make this method. Normally in this game, you can't click super far without these plugins. And with them on, you're dramatically cutting down the amount of clicks you need to travel a very far distance, which really come in handy. I personally have my draw distance on these plugins set to 90 and it works perfectly fine. But if your computer is a little bit older and the GPU plugin causes it to turn into a jet engine, you can can also use your mouse wheel to scroll over the minimap. This will zoom it out and let you click a little bit farther that way, but overall the GPU and 117 HD plugins are just so much more effective for this, so if you decide to do this, I really recommend you use at least one of them. If you play on mobile, you obviously can't click as far, but here's a little example on the minimap of where you can click from the dark altar when doing blood runes. If you click behind the fence, you should be able to do this in a very similar amount of clicks, but obviously doing it on mobile does make it a little bit less AFK because you will need to click more often to move the same amount of distance, but it, it is still very possible. The requirements for this activity are at least level 38 mining and crafting, so not a big deal, but you'll also need 77 runecraft for bloods or 90 for soul runes. While doing this activity, you'll be running a ton, so a higher agility level is also a strong benefit. And on top of that, there are three shortcuts that I would consider almost mandatory if you really want to do this. So I would say the agility requirement for blood runes is 73. This will let you use the shortcut by the blood altar back to the mine. This will almost literally double your XP per hour since you don't have to run all the way back. I would say this is a mandatory requirement. And weirdly enough, the agility requirement for soul runes is lower, being only 69. This is for the rocks at the Dense Essence Mine. You'll be using these for both, but this actually has a higher agility requirement than the Soul Rune shortcut. Uh, I don't know what Jamflex was cooking up, but that shortcut only needs 49 agility. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me, but 73 agility for bloods and 69 agility for souls. But even with that said, you'll probably want a higher agility level just overall for your account because of the run energy benefit. I've talked about it to death in the past, but just the higher your agility level is, the better running is in this game. So just know 73 and 69 are the bare minimums. And the last requirement for this activity would be Karen Favor, but that has been removed from the game. So if you've got everything else, you should be good to go. Gear wise, you have two options. The first would be a set of Graceful to maximize how much you can run, and the second would be a full set of the Remnants of the Eye with Graceful Gloves and Cape. You could sub out your Graceful Cape for an Agility Skill Cape if you finish running your 6 months of rooftops, but it's not a big deal. The difference between these two sets would not be that major for XP, but the Graceful setup might give you slightly more XP per hour because you can run a little bit more. The difference would be such a small margin that I think it's a better idea to wear the Remnants of the Eye. This will give you substantially more runes and in turn give you more profit per hour. I would personally recommend you go for option 2, as the profit will outweigh those few extra seconds of running. With your gear setup for both sets, you'll also need a pickaxe to mine the essence. The tier of pickaxe you use doesn't actually matter, so you can flex your ornamented dragon pickaxe or your third age pickaxe, or you could use a black pickaxe since it's the only one that weighs almost nothing. This will give you slightly more run energy, but again, it's not a huge deal. And the only other mandatory item is a chisel, so you can chip your essence into fragments so they can be used on the altar. Damn, I, f I feel like I said a lot, but I haven't done a lot, and there's still more information. I swear I'll get into it in one minute, but the last item I need to talk about is the blood essence. I'm sure you've used or at least heard of this item before, but it will basically give you 50% more additional blood runes for no additional XP. This comes out to be about 130k extra profit per each one 
one that you use. So if you want to make a little bit more GP per hour, you can bring one here as you craft blood runes. And I think that's everything I've got to mention before we jump in. Oh, no, wait, there, there's still more. When doing this activity, there are two diary benefits that will help you out along your journey. The medium Kebos diary gives you a 5% chance to mine two blocks at the same time. This will make your mining slightly quicker on average. And the elite Kebos diary gives you 10% more blood runes when crafting them. So that is a nice chunk of profit in the long term, but this is locked behind killing a Hydra and cutting a Redwood. This boost won't give you any additional XP, but will obviously increase your profit. So if you can only get one of them done, the medium diary sounds pretty reasonable. And the last thing we really need to talk about before jumping into it is how mining here works. When you mine dense essence blocks, there's a scale from 85 to 90% chance for the rock to not deplete. This 5% scale starts at level 38 mining and ends at 99. So there's only a 5% difference, but this obviously means that having a higher mining level is better, but not by a crazy amount. These items have a static gathering time, and this means that you'll mine one block successfully every nine game ticks. So that's roughly about every five seconds. That also means you could get super lucky and mine an entire inventory in one click, or you could get unlucky and mine the entire thing in one cycle, being about five seconds. With our chances being between 85 and 90%, you would expect to get roughly nine essence every time you click. So three clicks should get you a full inventory on average. I've noticed in previous episodes, I don't fully explain how methods work sometimes. I kind of just assume most people would understand how to click a fishing spot or click a tree. But in this one, I'll quickly run you through one cycle of creating runes, since it is a little bit different. You'll start by mining a full inventory of essence. You'll then leave the mine, run to the dark altar and create dark essence. You'll then run back to the mine while chiseling your first inventory into fragments. You'll mine another full inventory and return to the Dark Altar to make another inventory of Dark Essence. But now instead of running back to the mine, you'll run to the altar. Depending on which one you choose, you'll either go to the blood or soul altar. But both of these have a very far first click. So you can click very far away, look away from the screen and get some work done. I'll get you more exact numbers on the AFK times because there is a lot of variance in this one. But once you get to the altar, you'll craft your first inventory from the fragments. Then you'll chisel your remaining dark essence blocks and craft them into your second inventory. Then once all this is done, you return to the mine and do it all over again. When I do soul runes in the second half of the day, I won't explain this again, but the method is the exact same. You just head in the opposite direction towards the soul altar. And finally, with all the information out there, I will see you in four hours to recap how my time doing blood runes went. Okay, this was a little tight, but I've got some numbers for you. GP wise, in four hours, I made 1.9 million GP. This is only using the remnants of the eye. I didn't use a blood essence. I didn't use staminas. I didn't use a ring of endurance. This is just pure profit. So in four hours, I was making 475K an hour, which is pretty good. This will go up and down depending on what gear you decide to use. So if you go graceful, you would make slightly less. And if you decide to use a blood essence, it would be slightly more. I also do have the 10% buff from the diary, but I think I think you're looking pretty safe at looking towards between 400 and 550k an hour. That's a safe estimate. XP wise, I was getting 4k mining XP, 5.4k crafting XP, and 34.7k rune crafting XP, which is not terrible overall. This is substantially slower than doing something like lava runes or ZMI, but both of those methods will involve a lot more clicking. So if you prefer a more chill method, I would highly recommend this one. The AFK time for this activity is very hard to kind of break down. When you're making runes here, a full run is roughly eight minutes. But in that eight minutes, it breaks down into four or five categories. You have your mining time. This is nine ticks 
on nine essence on average. So that's roughly 48 seconds of AFK per click. And you would repeat this for three clicks. So it works out to be like two minutes and 25 seconds of total AFK broken up into three 48 second chunks. Then you have the run to the altar, which is two clicks. I used my footage to kind of get the time for this and this should be very consistent every time. Your first click is roughly 11 seconds of AFK and your second click is roughly 17 seconds. Running back to the mines is two clicks. The first click will be zero seconds of AFK because you're chiseling your essence and your second click will be 11 seconds plus the mining time of whenever your essence depletes. But then you also add in another mining cycle. So again, you get another two minutes and 25 seconds broken up into 48 second chunks. Then you have another run back to the dark altar then you have your altar to altar run, which is two clicks. The first click behind the fence is about 39 seconds, and the second click to the altar is about 16 seconds. You will have to chisel an inventory of fragments, and doing this will take you roughly 8 to 10 seconds, but I'll use 10 for a better estimate. So in total, a full run is about 8 minutes, and you're actively playing for about 1 minute and 30 seconds. So that would give you about 6.5 minutes of AFK time spread out awkwardly between each click. It's very hard to give you like an accurate AFK time. Time. I hope these numbers kind of break it down, but this method is AFK in the sense that it's low effort, but a lot of the AFK time is spread so weirdly that it kind of fits weird into a workday. Uh, but I'll talk about it more at the end of the video. But with all that said, the AFK time is nowhere near as much as a fishing method from the last episode that I showed you, but it was still somewhat manageable, especially on a day like I just had where I'm kind of just sending emails, checking in with people and sitting in meetings. What I learned is that getting one essence per click was way more common than I thought, but so was getting a full inventory in one click. It's just averages at work, I guess. Normally when I record these episodes, I make my lunch while I'm AFKing in the second half because I can kind of check the computer in between, but I don't think it's possible for this one because of the AFK times. So I'm taking my lunch break. I guess this episode is AFKing 9 to 5.30, so let me eat my food and I'll hop into soul runes. Okay, very, very similar. GP wise, I made 2 million for the four hours. This comes out to exactly 500K. This will go down slightly if you decide to use the graceful set. But overall, again, 400 to 500K is a reasonable estimate for profit. The mining and crafting XP you would expect to be the exact same, but I was a little bit more AFK this afternoon. I missed a, a couple more game ticks, if you will. For mining, I got 3.9K, and for crafting, I got 5.3K. So about 100 XP less for each of them. But rune crafting wise, I was getting 42.2K per hour, which is very, very good. I would say that if you decide to do this, switching to soul runes at 90 is just the obvious option. I think you save about 40 hours ish going for 99 by switching and there was a time when this came out where blood runes were done all the way to 99 because they were more profit than soul runes but the tumican shadow has kind of made these more profitable now so it is a good idea to switch and the afk time for soul runes is pretty much exactly the same as blood runes i give you a weird breakdown of like the exact seconds between clicks on the for blood runes the only difference is running back to the mine is not two clicks it's four clicks but the times actually come out to be very similar. It takes about eight minutes to do a full inventory. You're actively playing for about a minute and 30 seconds, and you get about six and a half minutes of AFK spread out very awkwardly between each click. I think this is gonna be one of the first episodes I don't put the stamp of approval on. And when I say that, I don't mean you shouldn't do this at all. This is a great activity for a day off where you wanna get some chill RCXP, but doing this during a workday can be pretty hard. And if I was much busier today, my XP rates would have tanked dramatically. Even though you aren't really clicking a ton for this activity, the time in between clicks is pretty tight sometimes. I do think this activity would work for some people depending on what your job is. So if you decide to try it out or this is your go-to, best of luck to you. But for now, this is an off work activity for me. And that was Zaya Runecrafting. Thanks to the big fellas, Snacks, Dan Smeghead, and Loki FM, and to the fellas, Jujo, Italk, Halal Platter, and the newest fellas, Sky and Otomachi. I hope I said that right. If I didn't, please let me know in the comments. Please consider liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already, or you can become a fellow by clicking the join button below the video. Doing that supports me directly and gives you access to pre-existing member-only ramble videos and anything new that gets uploaded there. I just put up a bank video as well as a ramble on the winter summit that just happened. So if that's interesting to you, that is available. But other than that, I've got nothing left to say, so I'll see you in the next one.